path some of us take to get to the propane industry are obviously different from others. Some people grow up in the industry. Others make their way into propane after establishing a career foothold <laughs> elsewhere. The latter was the pathway for Ted Lemoff, who entered the industry after nearly 20 years of stops in other industries and with other companies, where he could apply his engineering acumen. For more than 30 years now, he's been an advocate for the propane industry, offering his attention to detail and a clearer look at the big picture. An engineer by trade, Ted Lemoff made four career stops over 18 years before settling in at the National Fire Protection Association, where he offered direction and clarity on safety codes and standards for 25 years. Prior to joining NFPA in 1985, Lemoff jokes that he kept America clean, colorful, and overweight, referring to employers such as Procter & Gamble, Sun Chemical, and Table Talk Pies. At NFPA, Lemoff served to the benefit of the propane industry, overseeing the liquefied petroleum gas code and the national fuel gas code as staff liaison. Lemoff developed and maintained formal training programs on NFPA 58 and NFPA 54 over the years. At NFPA, Lemoff was valued for his ability to see the big picture at committee meetings. On many occasions, he brought committee members together through his catchphrase, Mr. Chairman, if I might suggest. The words brought focus to NFPA meetings at times when individual differences stood to slow committee progress. Lemoff recognized, too, that his function was not to make standards, but to get committees to work towards standard development. Still, Lemoff's contributions were not limited to committee meetings. Lemoff took a similar approach as the editor of the Liquefied Petroleum Gases Handbook and the National Fuel Gas Code Handbook, steering those publications through a combined 14 editions. Lemoff led the Liquefied Petroleum Gas Handbook through eight editions, growing it considerably as editor. The handbook reached 507 pages by 1992 and 593 pages by 2008, expanding in part because Lemoff wanted to provide context to codes and standards. Rather than simply conveying what the code was, Lemoff carved out space to explain why codes were drawn up in the first place. He took this approach to ease the minds of industry personnel and code enforcers who might have lingering questions about a standard. As editor, Lemoff also incorporated photographs and illustrations to offer clarity. According to him, it's one thing to write the code and fully another to take the time to understand it. But Lemoff went beyond his publications to explain NFPA codes. He regularly delivered seminars across the United States and to other parts of the world. Lemoff even learned Spanish, giving him the ability to converse on NFPA codes and standards with those in other nations. Today, Lemoff offers his services on the gas codes as a consultant extending his service to the propane industry across more than 30 years. I'm really honored to be here tonight, and I sincerely thank LP Gas Magazine for creating the Hall of Fame. I think it was a wonderful thing that's, that was overdue. And uh, obviously, I, I really thank the committee who saw fit to, for me to be here tonight. And for the, nominate, for the person who nominated me, I do appreciate that. You know, I saw a lot of things, and I have to say, I had a conversation last week, working on a legal case for one of the sponsors, and talking to the attorney, he said, you know, I once attended a committee meeting, and after people got over that there was an attorney present, he said, you know, I figured out what you did. You heard cats. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> they said it more nicely, but... <laughs> so, as I joined the 28 current Hall members, I'm honored, really honored to say that I've known and worked with many of them. I remember, I remember them all to be eloquent and knowledgeable speakers, but not always known for brevity. So tonight, I will not attempt to follow in their footsteps in that manner. So between the time I received my chemical engineering degree 
And going to work for an FBA, I had several positions, and they stole my thunder here, kept America clean, colorful, and overweight, and in energy. And uh, my, my work with propane began when I answered an ad in the Boston Globe put out by N NFPA for a gas engineer. Well, at the time, I was working for an engineering company that built uh, chemical plants and refineries throughout the world. Great job. I loved it. Unfortunately, it's not many people were building uh, refineries and petrochemical plants towards the end of my tenure there. Let me tell you, it's no fun working for a company when your clients are disappearing. Some of you may have heard that before or experienced it. And so I didn't have most of the qualifications, but as I found, the real qualifications are never in the ad. So to make a long story short, I got the job. And so in April of 1985, I started, and I started attending the semi-annual meetings of what was then the TNS committee, now the TSNS committee, and the safety committee, which has been merged. And it, throughout the, those twice a year meetings for all those years, I made many friends who really helped me to truly learn all about the stuff I deal with and have dealt with. Uh, I didn't get it in college, let me assure you. I said to many friends, but I wanna recognize, I guess if I had a mentor, it would have been M. Thomas. Many of you know M. Thomas, many of you have heard of him, he's kind of a legend. And he really took me under his wing and whenever I was at a meeting, he always made sure to know that I met the, the people he thought I should know and he provided a wealth of information on the early days of the industry, and uh, I really appreciate his help. And I really want to thank certain Hall members who I work with closely, uh, Walt Johnson, Sam McTeer, Bill McHenry, Dan Myers, and Charlie Sawyer for their, sh for their friendship. In my youth in the industry, I relied on these people to help me truly get it, what was going on, to help me understand the components and how they worked and how they worked together. And so to learn the details of why things got into the codes and, and the history. Uh, for example, I really remember all the comments on the blevies of the 1960s and 1970s. And being able to talk to people who were there and lived through it really helped me. <clears throat> and whenever I talked to them, I always got not only answers to my questions, but they took the time to make sure I understood it. Uh, and I used this knowledge in my, um, to answer, as my job as staff liaison, to answer questions, you know. What does this mean? How do I apply that? Yeah, I read the words, but. How does it apply to this or that? And, and it was those people who really helped me to understand that. And also in writing the handbooks, which were mentioned. And you know, the handbooks, I'm, I'm very proud of, both of them. And um, I, I, I have to, to admit, I'm not completely responsible for the content. Basically, I conned a lot of people to help me in writing it, <laughs> and they were very helpful. And uh, after a while, you know, I got it to the point where I said, okay, I've written three or four editions, and it's perfect. And the product managers say, you gotta change it. We can't get a copyright if it's the same every year. And so I started using these people and asking them, you wanna be a guest author, a guest contributor, and write a section. And I think that, that really helped the book and I'm proud to say is a model that was used by NFPA for the handbooks. First 58 handbook came out in 1986. I had just started, I wasn't the author. Uh, the, the authors, three of them were M. Thomas, I mentioned before, Walt Johnson, who was the uh, NPGA staff person, Jack Capp's successor, and uh, Bill Walls, who was my predecessor at NFPA. And I uh, authored them from then up till 2011, but significant parts ghostwritten by TNS committee members, and I think it made for a better book. Um, so looking back, I spent 25 years in NFPA, and it was the perfect job for me. Towards the end of my, towards the end of my time, my wife, Sharon, who's here with me tonight, said to me, why can't you be normal like other people and hate your job and want to retire? <laughs> I never had an answer for her. So uh, it's been six and a half years since I've retired, and the time's really gone quickly. I started a part-time consulting business and do both legal and technical work. The legal work, I have to say, has opened my eyes to many details I was able to dismiss when I worked for NFPA. The technical work includes a variety of areas from code consulting, 
approving drawings for propane terminals, and assisting companies to present their products to the various NFPA committees for revisions to allow them to be used. I've, completed, I've recently completed a most interesting project for the Standards Institution of Israel. I developed a draft standard for what is now the American path in the Israeli standard for natural gas industrial installations. And there's also a European <coughs> path. And basically, it allows American equipment that's listed to be brought into the country and used with no further listings or approval whatsoever, which I think is a great milestone. And I'm currently waiting to hear from them if I'm going to participate in a project for the residential use of natural gas and propane. So I continue to enjoy working in the field just as much as I when I work for NFPA, and I'm going to continue. Before I sit down, I do want to recognize my co-inductees tonight, and I'm proud to say it's my pleasure to have worked with all of them. I specifically want to recognize Bill Young. During my tenure at NFPA, Bill would call with questions about projects, projects he was working on, to be sure that he fully understood the nuances of 58 and so that he could provide completely safe and code complying installations as economically possible for his client, for his for the projects and his clients. And I respect them for that. When I began my consulting career, Bill returned the favor by me being my guy for engineering details, because I stopped really being an engineer 25 years previously. So Bill, thank you. Thank you all. Good night.